A security consultant, Kabiru Adamu, in an earlier interview, shared his perspective on whether or not the decision can effectively address the security situation in the state. Uh, um, as far as I know, several states in the Federation have attempted that some of them made it public, while others did not make it public. What they did is they just uh, go, went ahead and sought some kind of uh, probably backdoor arrangement between them and either the Inspector General of Police to acquire weapons for uh, the type of state level security structures they have. Um, I, what comes to my mind immediately is almost all the south, southern states, if you go to Anambara, uh, Imo, name them, you would see state level arrangements and they're all armed. Um, then in the north, if you go to Benue State, and I think Taraba State, the state level security structures, as well as Borno State and Adamawa, you see them with, with weapons. So this is not new in a sense. It's um, new because, of course, Zamfara State is bringing it up. And in fact, even in Zamfara State, if we go back to under the Good Luck Jonathan administration, there was a time when the state government attempted to procure weapons and it was blocked by then. So the question is, if the other states have done it, what effect have we seen in terms of reduction of um, security challenges within the states? Frankly, not much. And the simple reason is because the Weapons Act currently that is in place only allows simple mechanism weapons such as the pump action weapon or the rifle to be procured um, by either individuals or other non-state non um, actors under which the state level security structures fall into. And the non-state actors that are attacking these communities for which the Zamfara state government wants to defend have weapons of bigger capacity the list they have are AK-47, and some of them, in fact, even use RPGs to attack. So in this context, what the Navarra state government is attempting to do is to ask communities to use basic weapons to defend themselves from attackers that have these very military-grade um, weapons. And so I do not think beyond um, perhaps serving a political purpose, this, this act is going to really limit or stop the type of um, occurrences that we're seeing in the Zamfara state. If we look at the bigger picture, um, what, what does this entail for the Nigerian state? Yes, uh, it's an invitation to some kind of anarchy where we're going back to the Hobbesian state of existence. The uh, stronger uh, kind of person would, would have his say, more, more or less. Uh, we are all students of that, and we we, all, we know what the consequences of, of a Hobbesian state, state of existence would um, augur for Nigeria. So, in a nutshell, uh, this uh, measure by the Zamfara state government, yes, it may appear uh, it is good in the first instance, but in the long run, it would unfortunately bring in uh, worse, even though I must say, uh, it has indicated that it would regulate the acquisition of weapons that is going to give forms to communities and the communities will fill those forms and those forms will be submitted to the Inspector General of Police. And it is only when the Inspector General of Police approves um, this uh, li licensing that the weapons will be acquired for this community. So there, there, there is some form of structure. But yes, um, in the long run, like we all know in Nigeria, that structure is like likely to be abused, and unfortunately, it would lead to um, you know an, an open acquisition, as it were, of, of weapons. So, so what would um, you say in my is honest the best opinion, approach it is for not this, the know, best way a, to go. Uh, the reality is that the responsibility for the protection of communities lies with, the, especially the federal government. And looking at the bigger picture, I am of the view that the federal government needs to come out with a framework to guide the state. Uh, acquisition of not just weapons, but for the security structure within the states. We have states doing different things, and unfortunately, there is no harmonization efforts by those states. So, a framework by the federal government that has responsibility for that security, I think it would be a better way to go you know, to handle this issue.